Hold on one second, we're going to go down. If we can get you guys to step down on the racetrack. I want to thank a lot of you people for uh, sending me some cars last September when I was in the hospital. And I'm very sick. I want to thank you and for all the prayers, what have you, that you can help me and my wife with. I want to take this opportunity at this time to thank you. This is uh, Marion Brooks with a presentation down on the racetrack. Go ahead, Marion. We can get y'all to move away from the uh, band there a little bit. Marion down there with a presentation for Jim, James, and Barbara Knuckles, the owners of the Speedway. Well, with this being the 50th year for the Plymouth Flores Speedway here, I think I've been here for about the last 46 years of it. And my wife and I would like to present Jim and Bobby with the clock for the last 50 years. And we hope to you, some of the young ones, have another few years of entertainment here at the Plymouth Motor Speedway. And to you, Jimmy and Bobby, we want to present you this pop. Barry Brooks, of course, uh, the uh, owner of Brooks Racing Tires, been here for a long time. Barry, uh, tell you what, about uh, six months ago was in very, very, very bad condition. A hospital in Springfield, Ohio, finally recuperated a little, or has recuperated, and spent some time in Florida doing much better back on the job. We're glad to see Marion Brooks back. Mary and Anthony say a few words. A lot of you folks uh, don't remember John Knuckles, who was the first president of Columbus Motor Speedway Incorporated. A lot of great guys who built this racetrack belong to the Columbus Motorcycle Club. That's why you see the big turns here. We want to thank those guys who started this racetrack, thank my father-in-law for keeping it going and leading it to Jimmy. And we intend to leave it to our kids, and you've got to just keep coming, guys. You've got to keep coming. Thanks a million. So again, the presentation to uh, James Barbara Knuckles, the owners of Columbus Motor Speedway, here in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of uh, racing here at the third mile of Drivers meeting in the pit area, so we're well, uh, going to do the first seat race. Four cars are similar in some respects to the left cars. These cars are you're allowed to make uh, quite a few more modifications on these cars than you do the legend cars. They also have predominantly steel bodies compared with the legend cars, which will be run here in a couple weeks. The legend cars run fiberglass bodies. These are Work cars, however, and uh, some of the series sponsors uh, for this series: Baldridge Propane Exchange, a Beeline Aligning Service, Hunter Lift Truck Service, mainly Crazy Park, Mike Park, Jack Auto Parts, Kroger, and the rest. We've got the Mercy Crate ready to roll. Eight racing laps. Eight laps for the Work Car Mercy Crate. Starting on the pole, what looks to be car 42. 42, that is Pete Jameson. Jameson hails from Pro City, Ohio. Alongside in car number four, the driver is Dan Ankra. Dan Ankra in car four. Then we've got car number 37, I think it is. That's Jeff Sanger from Surf at Surf, Ohio. Alongside in car number 07, the pilot is Gary Sauger from Parkersburg, SD. It comes 55, the driver of car 55, Spence Spurs from Mansfield. And alongside, I can't quite make out that number. Inside the uh, fourth row, looks to be car 12, I believe. That's Mark Bernard. And then alongside of him in, maybe that's car zero, I suppose, Randy Ankrum in zero. And then on the tail, the blue car, I'll get you a number and a driver's name momentarily. That's uh, driver in car number 2C, 
is uh, Kirk Claypool from Washington Courthouse. That'll do it. Also, I missed car 24, the black car. That driver's name is Sean Stevens from Columbus. Eight laps for the dwarf car. First heat race here on Tubular Techniques Subway. Tonight at the race is also Engine Rebuilder Supply. And our 50th anniversary racing series underway with Winston and Duke Oil, the sponsor of our race. But that's not going to last long. We see 07, Gary Salyer, trying to make a move. Salyer, oh, close to corner, back there in turn number three. Now it's car 42, still your leader. Pete Jameson, and caution on the speedway. Looks to be car 24. That is Sean Stevens, car 24. Car 07 jumps into the lead this time from Parkersburg, West Virginia. That's Gary Salyer. Salyer, your leader. Second in car 37, Jeff Staggers from Nurk, Ohio. Salyer, you're the leader. In third place, that's car 42, Pete Jamison. Fourth in car 55. Now there's a battle at the front. Oh, close quarters. Salyer sideways in turn three and four. Wheel banging off the fourth third. And into the lead, car 37. That's Jeff Stagger. Car 55 runs third. That is Spence Stearns from Mansfield, Ohio. Stearns now begins to close on your leader. And still, Staggers out front in car 37, Jeff Staggers. Salyer in 07, he likes that dirt, he's down there in the dirt off turn four. Car 42, leaking fuel. Has been black flag. That'll move car number four, I think it is, up to the fourth position. Dan Ankrum from Galloway is fourth. Again, the 42 leaking fluid on the speedway. Now lap traffic comes into play. They'll complete lap number six this time as Randy Ankrum calls it a, an event in car zero. off turn four. White flag this time. Gary Salyer begins to close in about a car length. Separate your lead duo. Down the back stretch they go. Winning the first dwarf car heat race in car 37. Jeff Stagger from Newark, Ohio. 07 finishes second out of Parkersburg, West Virginia, Gary Salyer in car 55, Spence Stearns from Mansfield, and in car number four, Dan Ankrum. So let's hear it by Jack Morgan, a longtime owner here at the Speedway. Outside in 3B, that is Brad Bigham from Mount Sterling, Ohio. Then comes car 21. Another familiar name from Grove City, Robin Pendleton in 21. And outside in car number six, the driver is Mike Rector. 04 is piloted by Doug Eagle from Mansfield. And alongside of Doug in car number, what I think is car number nine. That's maybe car number five, it would appear. That is Bill Vargo from Wheeling, West Virginia. We'll have to wait until they get back around this way to sell the rest of the lineup. 
I know outside of the fourth row in card three, I can tell you that is Ike Carter from Logan. Deep in the heart of Logan. Inside of that row in the white car, inside row number four, the driver appears to be car number 10. Kelly Moore from Burlington, Kentucky. Car 4B or B4, whichever way uh, you want to say it, is... Oh, here we go. Wayne Fitzpatrick. And we're just about ready to roll. I'll give you the final two starters. Car number seven is Greg Watson. I'll give you the end. I'll give you the other starter as they come by. Eight laps of racing action. Car number eight, that is Chet Baldry. Senior out front, and we got a spin. A spin car 04. Call restart. Car 04, the spinner was Doug Eagle from Mansfield, bringing out the caution flag. Again, the front row, car number 11, Dick Dunleavy Senior. I believe. Up. I'm sorry, he's from Wheeling, West Virginia. Dick Dunleavy Sr. now stretches it out over Robin Pendleton. Vargo is third. Now a pass for the fourth spot. Fourth place now, car number 10. That's Kelly Moore. Again, 0-4. He likes that. He's looking for that cushion up there. He must be a dirt racer. Way up there in the gray stuff. Dunleavy continues to lead the parade. We're halfway through this one. On the move is car number five, Bill Vargo from Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh, Vargo looks to the inside of Pendleton down in turn one. Can't make the pass. Vargo in the yellow number five, looking for a way around Robin Pendleton. Six laps, this one, two, time, two to go. Last traffic, that's Jeff Baldridge in car eight. Slow. Now Vargo with a run on Pendleton. They'll race down into turn number three. Oh, Pendleton slams the door. A white flag for Dick Dunleavy Sr. And the winner of the second dwarf car heat race, Dick Dunleavy Sr. Second is, will be close. It'll go to Robin Pendleton. Third, Bill Vargo. Fourth is Kelly Moore. And coming home fifth in 3B, that is Brad Bigum. So some great racing, the dwarf cars. Let's hear for all the dwarf car competitors here tonight. Front row in car 22, that's Donald Parsons. Parsons in 22, alongside in car number 10, the pilot from Sunbury, Ohio, Steve Scott. Your defending track champion in car number two starts inside of row two. That is Don Gregory Jr. And alongside in car 25, the 1995 track titleist, 
Jimmy Kidd, make that 94. Jimmy Kidd in car 20, 25, the 94 track champion. A jumbled start. You can look for a, there we go. Parsons with a jump off there on turn number four, and then Steve Scott came back in a hurry on the front stretch. We'll leave it run. They came across pretty darn well lined up. Parsons and Scott go at it for the top position. Limited Sportsman Division. Action, the trophy dash. Don Gregory Jr. looking to make it three wide, but thinks better of it. They'll be halfway this time. Two laps to lead. Gregory and Kidd look to be going after it all season long for the points lead. Look to be the odds-on early favorites. Meantime, Donald Parsons leads this one. White flag, one lap to go. Still lined up. Now Parsons with a half-car length advantage. Again, Scott charges back on the outside. Your winner, it will be close. Donald Parsons. Second position goes to Steve Scott, third, Don Gregory Jr., and coming home fourth, Jimmy Kidd. Donald Parsons, put your hands together. Donald Parsons in car 22. That's Tracy Prigner, outside in 06. Jeff Loudermilk, 27, is none other than Jimmy McCulley and 17, Dave Ritchie, Jr. Then comes 91, Sean Gray, moving up from the street stocks last year. Alongside of him in 35, Tom Idle. Then comes 7, that is Bubby Scott, and 9, David Greeno. Eight laps, the Limited Sportsman, first heat race. And we got action. Bubby Scott spins in turns one and two. Eight laps for the limited sportsman heat race. Oh, Jimmy McCauley with a slide down in turn number one. He recovers. We remain under green. Jeff Loudermill leads the parade off turn number four. That's Dave Ritchie Jr. second. Richie and Gray go at it off turn two. Now Sean Gray runs second. Dave Richie Jr. third. Fourth currently held by Tom Idle. Gray begins to close on your leader down the back stretch. They'll complete lap number three this time. Ben, Bubby Scott, the spinner down in turn number, turn number four. Sean Gray wastes little time. He immediately races into that second group. Ooh, tight quarters on the backstretch. Now Gray is sideways in turn three, recovers, but Loudermilk retains the lead. and Gray distance themselves from third place, Dave Ritchie. Louder 
himself begins to find his pace as he is now uh, stretched it out just a little bit over Sean Gray. Two circuits remain. A white flag this time as Gray again closes on Louderville. Gray one more time, giving it a big effort in turns three and four, but it's going to be Jeff Lauderdale, John Gray, Dave Ritchie, and Tom Idle with Jimmy McCauley coming home in fifth. Bill Huntley. Builder Supply, one of the sponsors here tonight. The Engine Parts Specialist, Engine Rebuilder Supply, 272-1525. Proud sponsor of tonight's racing action. Fender over Jerry Buck, but now Buck charges back through turns one and two. Mike Brown all alone in third spot. Now Buck with the advantage down the front stretch. Mike Brown moves into second. Jerry Buck now with about a car length and a half over Mike Brown. Now Randy Sward begins to make his presence known in car eight, as does Bill Huntley. Huntley trying to move underneath Holland for that fourth position. Meantime, Randy Sward runs third, halfway through this event, with Jerry Buck, your leader. Looking high and looking low for a way around Mike Brown. Meantime, Brown trying to size up Jerry Buck. A man on a move. Oh, is Buddy Townsend. Townsend started six. He's trying to move into third. And that stock appearing. Entry. Now Swords looks to the inside of Mike Brown down the front step they go. Brown gives way and Sword takes over the second spot. And it's over. Where, where was the announcer? I hate when that happens. Your winner, no doubt about that one. It was Jerry Buck. Who finished second in that? 
Oh, here we go. Mike Brown, second. <laughs> Third is Randy Sword. And uh, fourth is uh, Buddy Townsend. And in the late model division, the big bird, Robbie Dean. And alongside your fast qualifier tonight, 13.980, Donnie Renner. Just with a bit of an advantage over Boca. Boca gets back. Bobby Boca fends off Mike Ward through turns one and two, but the Urban Ohio driver and given up yet. Robbie Dean right there. He looks to the inside of Ward down the back stretch. They go. It's still Bobby Bullcook, your leader. Side racing action. Now Bullcook, about a half car length advantage, now two car lengths down the back stretch. Ward trying to squeeze down in front of Dean. White flag. In that second groove, Donnie Ritter continues to hang on. Try to work on Robbie Dean. No doubt about your winner, though. It will be second goes to Mike Ward. Third is Robbie Dean. And fourth, Donnie Ritter. Let's hear it. Bobby Bocook, your winner. Car sponsored by Skinner Diesel Services, Central Ohio Engine Services. From Columbus, Ohio. Make that. Yeah, that is Burgess White. Burgess White in 59. Alongside hit car number four. Fred Reichert, Reichert in four. Second row in car number 33. The driver is Dean Fusco. And outside in car 81, Don Wetnall. Row number three consists of car nine, Danny Eaves. In car 45, John Strobel. Row four, that's Larry Harris. Outside of him, Sturgill Napier. Then we've got... Uh, Car 59, that's, I'm sorry, 58, that's Ken White. Car number six, a driver change, that is Tim Ice. Tim Ice is in number six, and Larry Miley starts on the tail, requests the tail, car number five. Miley, one of the rookies in this field. Burgess White and Fred Riker lead the parade for this, the first 10 lap late model heat event. Fasten your seatbelt, folks. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Burgess White leads down the backstretch. Dean Fusco is second. Sergio Napier brings out the caution flag. So against Ken White, Larry Miley, and Sergio Napier. Riker trying to hang on to Burgess White. 
Don Wetnall right there in the inside, right behind Burton White. Braggart in that stock appearing for Thunderbird. Falls to third. Burgess White, your leader. Second now is Don Wetnall. Dean Fusco runs fourth. That's Danny Eves in the fifth spot. Side of Dean Fusco, but caution first. Okay, caution for the caution. I'm sorry, he goes to the back. He is, Burgess White will go to the tail of the event. Then comes John Strobel in 45, 47, Larry Harris, 04, Sergio Napier and Larry Miley in car number five. Four down, six to go. Jumps on the start. He'll go. Don Wetnall again takes over or uh, controls the race. Now we got some action. Oh, John Strobel trying to make a move on the outside of Danny Eves. Eves meantime looking underneath Dean Fusco. Fusco. Real close to Riker down in turn number one. Wetnall pulling away. Now John Strobel leads Tim Ice around Dean Fusco and Danny Eves. Look to the outside of Reichert in turns one and two. Tim Ice runs fourth. Close quarters down here in three and four as Ice and Strobel swap some bait. They'll get a white flag this time. Now Tim Ice goes after the four dealer in turn three and four. John Wetnall continues to lead. Port Ohio, Don Wetnall. The battle for the runner-up spot will be close. Tim Ice finishes second, Fred Riker third. I believe was John Strobel. Yeah. Yeah. Terry Humphrey and alongside in 29 is Kevin Miller. The second row car 99, that's Jim Cruz. 16 is Mike Simpson. Car 77, Kenny Sward. Outside 21 for Miamisburg, John Vallow. Car number zero is next, Donnie Zero Hill. And 13, that's Jerry Jones. 26 is Bill Cantley. 86, a driver change, that is Gary St. in 86. And on the tail, car 25 is Gary Carter. 10 laps, your second late model heat race.
Don Bree with the advantage down the back stretch. Kevin Miller and Jim Cruz go at it for a second position. Cruz still trying to work inside of Kevin Miller. Now Miller takes over second spot. Here comes Ballow. He makes a move on Ken Sward in turn three and four. The Burko Trucking Express on the move. Ballow around Jim Cruz for third spot. off two. Cruz recaptures that position momentarily. Kevin Miller with a good run in car 29, but the really good runs. Terry Humphrey, he has distanced himself from the rest of the field halfway through this. Moves up to third spot. He'll look to try to chase down Kevin Miller. And Kevin Miller spins on the back trip. Kenny Sword and fifth Jerry Jones. Oh, now John Ballow right on the back bumper of Terry Humphrey. Humphrey bends him off down the front strip. down to third spot over Kenny Ford. Now Humphrey puts some distance between himself and Ballow. White flag. And the winner, car number one. Terry Humphrey. Second is John Ballow. Third goes to Jim Cruz. Fourth, Kenny Sward. And rounding out your top five, Jerry Jones. Stock Trophy Dash, the first event. Your lineup goes like this. Carl Katz in car number 46 starts first. Outside in 26, the driver is Scott Stevens. The second row, car 31, that's Jim Hersey. And on the tail, Jamie Hunt. Your fast qualifier tonight, Steve Tuttle. Um, apparently the car broke, is disabled and scratched for the evening, so Jamie Hunt assumes the fourth place in this Trophy Dash event. We're underway. Carl Katz leads the parade down through turns one and two. Scott Stevens. Up in that second groove, going after it. Jim Hersey currently third. Stevens again challenging his catch. for 
Carl Katz. Stevens runs second, still now Hunt. Makes a move around Jim Hersey. And it'll be Carl Katz, your winner. Second is Scott Stevens, third Jamie Hunt, and fourth Jim Hersey. So Carl Katz with his first ever trophy dash win, I believe. Let me check that, make sure I'm accurate there. Cats first ever trophy dash win. Twenty-nine is driven by Mark Freybot, a rookie driver. Then comes thirty-four Gary Lamer. Oh seven is John Morgan. Car fifty-eight is driven by Sandy Butcher. Ninety-nine is Joe DeGregory, and finally, car number five, that's Daryl Dexter. Still number one, buddy. All right, eight laps for the first of three street stock heat races. Russ Harper, out front. He's got that front row starting position and takes advantage. He'll lead him down the back straightaway. Then James New charges into second. Gary Lamer up to third position. James New putting the pressure on Russ Harper. Now, Lamer looking to go three wide down the front stretch. Oh! Close quarters in street stock racing action. James New now with a bit of an advantage. Harper holding that inside line, but New takes control. James New, your wet leader. Gary Lamer. Run second now. He'll go after New on the backstretch. Good battle back in the pack. Now up to four spot is car 58, Sandy Butcher. Her Pennington falls to fifth position. Now six, now seven. Your leaders, James New. Again, Lamer to the outside of James New. A white flag this time. Second is Gary Lamer, Russ Harper third, car 58, Sandy Butcher is fourth, and Herb Pennington in 78 finishes fifth. Joe DeGregory spins in car 99, but this one is history.
71, Scott Hoffman is next. Outside of him in 97, Mark Life. Then we've got number 70. Number 70, Heavy Hill. 24 is Rob Martin. 27, Dave Dysinger. And 43, that's Mike Schweier. Race number two. Stacy and Mortimer slug it out through turns three and four. Bobby Stacy with an advantage. Mortimer again with that horsepower pulls alongside on the backstretch. Heavy Hill is third, fourth. Your Bob Evans Rookie of the Year last year is Rob Martin. Now Heavy Hill up to the runner-up position. Oh, and here comes Rob Martin. A hello, how do you do to Rusty Mortimer? Slips inside and takes over the third spot. Certainly a clean pass. He was clear up beside the 30, but uh, Mortimer apparently didn't, didn't expect him. Stays out front. But now Heavy Hill closing in. Also Mike Schweier making a move. He's up to fifth. this time. Stacy leads him down a backstretch. Schweier and Mortimer go at it for four spot. No doubt about your winner, it will be Bobby Stacy. Second is Heavy Hill. Third goes to Rob Martin. Fourth is Rusty Mortimer. And fifth, that was Mike Schweier, for those of you keeping score at home. Let's hear a standing ovation, everybody, on your feet for Bobby Stacy. Well, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. I just thought we'd have a little fun with it. No, that's Bubba Parsons. It, Bubba Parsons, sorry about that, in 22. Tom Bond in 52. In 65, that's George Lindsay. Alongside in car number nine, Don Holland. 77 is Don Townsend Jr. Bo Davis in 18. 49, Bobby Atkins in double zero. Ron Mangus, eight laps. Bubba Parsons is your leader. Second spot up for grabs, that's George Lindsay and Tom Bond. Lindsay in 65, Bond in 50. Don Townsend Jr. squeezes underneath Bond for the third position.
Now Lindsay looks to the outside of Bubba Parsons, but he doesn't have enough steam to make the pass. Lindsay in that high groove. Townsend trying to take advantage, but Lindsay looks to the outside again of Bubba Parsons. They'll get the halfway signal this time. It's still old Bubba holding down the front spot. Townsend and challenge Parsons. Lindsay and Bomb mean Bond meantime go at it for a second spot. The white flag will be waving this time. Bubba Parsons currently your leader. Don Townsend Jr. is second. Now Tom, a resurgent Tom Bond challenges Townsend for the runner-up spot. Your winner will be Bubba Parsons. Oh, second, too close to call. I have to get the coin out and flip it here. Either that or check with official scoring. Tom Bond finishes second. Third goes to 77, Don Townsend Jr. Fourth is uh, Bo Davis. Well, we're finally here at Columbus Motor Speedway. Right now we got blue skies. Looks like we might actually get a race in. We're talking with Jim Kidd, uh, track champion in the uh, Limited Sportsman two years ago. And uh, what? Main event, main event winner last year. Main event winner last year. Uh, uh, that was Edwin. That was a real good one. Uh, we waited for a couple of egos to take themselves out, and then Jimmy won. Jimmy, what's your plans for this year? Ah, uh, we're going to, uh, they want me to be a little more consistent the first 10 laps of every feature and uh, let the car do the rest of the work during the night and come to the front. Now, you're going to be racing here every week for the championship? We're going to be racing for the championship, trying to beat our little purple buddy over there. I won't say any names, but they know who they are. Uh, we'll, we'll be in the hunt. We're, we've been hot lapped already, and we're fast. Okay, now, uh, a couple years ago, Columbus resurfaced the track. How's the track coming around? At first, everybody talked about how rough the track was. How's the track coming around? Uh, the track's had a couple years to age now, and uh, uh, I pretty well got these tires down on how to make them soft. Uh, so um, we, uh, the track's biting good. I look for the records and the late model and uh, sportsman classes to be broke in the next three or four weeks. Well, we just may be talking to 1996's track champion in the sportsman. Jim, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, when you talk about veteran drivers, you have to mention the name Don Heavy Hill. Heavy, another year racing. What's in store for us this year? Oh, we got a couple of good sponsors that helped us out a bunch this year, and we're going to, I think we're going to win some. We've had a couple problems so far. We changed the color of the car, and everybody says green's bad luck, but tell, tell Ed Howe that. He made millions off of green, so we'll be ready for him, I think. Beat some of these young boys. The young boys like to beat us. Uh, now, are you going to be racing out of Kill Care this year? Yeah, I was planning on going last night, but I had some motor problems Thursday. But we'll be there next week for sure. Excellent. I know there's a couple guys coming down there from Columbus. How does uh, Kill Care and Columbus compare as tracks? Well, the tracks are pretty close. Uh, Kill Care's got a, a D in one corner. It's a little harder to get through. But the rest of it is basically the same. And Kill Care's really improved their track. It's uh, They've done some real nice facilities down there. And they uh, their rules are a little different. There are loud headers and four barrels where we're not, but the car, you, you, you know, you only got a seven inch, eight inch tire, so if you got a decent handling car, you can run with them. We can beat them if we get a break. 
That sounds good. All righty, Heavy. Well, good luck tonight, and we'll see you out there hopefully in the winter circle. Thank you much. I hope so. Sitting here talking to Jerry Jones, some of the most comfortable seats in the pits. Jerry, you finished second last year in the Sportsman Points and was oh so close. What you got in store for this year? I just hope to finish in the top ten and win a couple features in the late models. Um, since you're racing in the late models this year and not in the Sportsman, how do the two divisions really compare? I'm finding out there's a big difference. There's things I'm doing wrong driving the late model versus what I could do driving the sportsman car. And I've, I've got to try to adjust myself a little different, which I hope I can do. Standing here talking to Fred Reichert, uh, rookie driver for the late models this year, but no stranger to racing, racing in many di different divisions in the years past. Fred, how's it feel to be in a late model here at Columbus? Uh, right now I'm scared. No, this is petrifying. I, I guess the... Uh, I should be I should be scared with the go karts, but I'm I'm used to them. But this is new, and uh, hey, I don't know. I'm not having fun. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, how does a big car compare to the smaller midgets and the go karts that you have raced in? Uh, it's surprisingly similar. There's a whole lot of similarities, and I just encourage any uh, youngster out there uh, thinking about go karts or midgets jump in one because it's the same thing. It's only bigger, but it's the same basic principle. So. Uh, I hope I hope over the next few weeks I, I pick up the uh, call it the kinetic rhythm and we'll have it. Uh, Columbus is a very difficult track to drive. The uh, races I did in Florida were on longer tracks which were easier. So uh, yeah, I'm a little apprehensive tonight. I think uh, once I get out there and hear 8,000 RPM the first time and I get bumped around a little bit, I'll feel better. That sounds great, Fred. Well, I'm going to let you alone, let you get back to the work, and good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. I need it. Thank you, Fred. Bye. What's that? Well, I don't have a... Oh, I'm sorry, 3B, that's who that is. 3B, driven by Brad Bigham. Bigham from Mount Sterling. 24 is piloted by Sean Stevens out of Columbus. 04, that is driven by Doug Eagle from Mansfield. Then comes 2C... The driver of 2C, Kirk Claypool, Washington Courthouse. Number three is Ike Carter from Logan. Zero is Ron, Randy Ankrum. 4B is, is uh, or B4, Wayne Fitzpatrick. 42 is driven by Pete Jamison out of Grove City. Car number seven is next. That would be Greg Watson out of Westerville. In comes car six, hometown uh, Mount Vernon. That's Mike Rector in six. And finally, Chet Baldridge in car number eight. It would appear that car 55 is not going to answer the bell. That driver's name, that driver was scheduled to start in the fifth position. Car 55, the driver's name is Spitz Stearns from Columbus. He is out. Senior outside of that front row. Staggers will get the jump. Oh, 07 playing a little bumper tag or wheel tag at any rate with Dunleavy. Oh, 07 that driver's name Greg, Gary Salyer. Dunleavy back to third. On to moving car number five. Car five, that 
is Bill Vargo. Vargo is up to third, challenging for second. Robin Pendleton runs fifth in car 21. Jeff Staggers from Newark, Ohio continues to lead. Got a car off the track over in turn four. Oh seven, it runs second. That is Gary Salyer, Parkersburg, West Virginia driver. But now Salyers gets, oh, squirrely off turn two. And car five takes over the runner-up spot. Again, car number five, Bill Vargo. Then comes 07, 07. Again, bumping wheels with Dick Dunleavy Sr. Staggers your leader in car number 37. But here comes Bill Vargo. Vargo taking control. Bill Vargo, your leader. Gary Stagger, make that uh, Staggers, Jeff Stagger is now second. Third is Dunleavy. Running fourth, Gary Salyer. Fifth, Robin Pendleton. down the back stretch is your leader. Here comes your leader, number five. Number 37 is second, Jeff Staggers. Dick Dunleavy Sr. in 11, runs third. Fourth is Robin Pendleton. Fifth now in car number 10 is Kelly Moore. And caution on the speedway. Eight laps in the record books. So we've got a spun car. I believe that's the 3B car of Brad Bigham, but uh, I'm not sure about that. The black car was spun in the middle of the backstretch. I stand corrected, that was the 24 car. 24. Running order once again, car five.
battle continues to be Dunleavy and Staggers for the runner-up spot. Dick Dunleavy Sr. probably in his uh, late 60s continues to run in that third position. second in the event. Car 37 is your third place car in the event. second year. 
And did you race anything before this? Uh, not really. I motocrossed for 10 years. Oh, well, this is a little gentler. Yeah, a little bit. Easier on the body, too. Hey, you know, a lot of these people sit up in the stands, always say they want to drive a race car someday and all that. This is where you can start and not be real expensive, correct? Oh, it is. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, you heard it. It's fun. That's what it's about. Congratulations. Did you like uh, being on asphalt instead of dirt like you run a lot of times? I love the asphalt. I love it. Hey, how about a hand once again from Wheeling, West Virginia, Bill Vargo. All right, so there you go. Bill Vargo, your winner. 35, the driver is Tom Idol. Next up, in car number seven, the driver's name, Bubby Scott, and alongside of him, Jerry Buck in zero one. Then comes 30, Bill Hundley, and 86, Mike Holland, the next row, Mike Brown in car 20, and car number 5, Bob Grubal. Then we've got Randy Sworn in car number 08, and 76. That driver's name is uh, Buddy Townsend. 22 is Donald Parsons, and car number 10, Steve Scott. Number 2, that's Don Gregory Jr., your defending track champion at 25. Jimmy Kidd, your fast qualifier tonight. Up next in car 12, Tracy Bricker, who has apparently requested the tail. So up next will be 17. Um, that is Dave Ritchie. And 27, Jimmy McCulley. 06, Jeff Louderville. Oh, I see 17, okay. 12 was supposed to start near the tail. Tracy Brickner, that was 17. It was up in the 15th starting spot. Tracy Brickner starts 18th in car 12. And then finally car 9, David Greeno. Okay, the first limited sportsman feature of the 1996 racing season. Sean Gray and Tom Idol, Bubby Scott, Jerry Buck, Bill Hundley and Mike Holland, Mike Brown and Bob Grubal, Randy Sward, Buddy Townsend, we're ready to do battle, 30 laps. Disposes of 
exposes a
time.
get you a top 10 rebuilder supply to Dutch's Subway in Iron Creek. Well, he gets out of the car, and uh, the kid's not getting any younger, but you're still showing him how, aren't you? No, it's, uh, the, uh, the car works well. I got to thank my crew. I got to thank the wives of the crew for letting their men work on it this winter. Uh, I hope it ain't on fire. I want to thank the crowd, big crowd. Thank everybody for rooting for me. Thank my union sponsor, Mike Hall. Thank Rodney's Auto Sales, Ross Wells. Uh, Gene Bouchard and his wife. Thanks to everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the guys uh, from the crew said it all, the screaming banana, the man who makes it happen though, Jimmy Kidd, your feature winner tonight. First off, let's go down, let's run down the limited sportsman top 10 finish. Of course, Jimmy Kidd, the winner, second, went to uh, car number 10. That was Scott Stevens, then came 08, Randy Sward. Car number 2, Don Gregory Jr. was next. In fifth spot, that was car 20, Mike Brown. Sixth, back from the tail, was Buddy Townsend in 76. In seventh spot, Bob Grubal. Eighth, went to Sean Gray. Ninth was Jerry Buck, and in 10th position, Dave Ritchie Jr. So that's your top 10 finish order. All right, here is your starting lineup for tonight's 50 lap, 50th anniversary racing series sponsored by Winston and Duke Oil Company. On the pole in car 25, that's Gary Carter from Columbus, Ohio. Carter, of course, the current track record holder here at the Speedway. Alongside in car 21, the six-time track champion, most recently in 1993, John Vallow in 21 from Miamisburg, Ohio. Row number two, that's Jerry Jones. He finished runner-up in the Sportsman points last year. Outside in car number two, that is Bobby Bocook. Bocook in two. Next up, car 61, Mike Ward, the 94 track champion. And alongside the 95 track champion, that's Robbie Dean. Next up, Donnie Renner in car 92. In 26, Bill Cantley. After that, we've got uh, Zero, Donnie Zero Hill in the budget car sales entry. And 77, Kenny Sward. 16, Mike Simpson is next, followed by Jim Cruz in 99. Then we've got 29, Kevin Miller. Number one, Terry Humphrey. 47 is Larry Harris. 45 is, is John Strobel. Car number nine, tonight driven by Danny Eves. 81, Don Wetnall. 33 is in car 33, that's Dean Fusco. 59, Burgess White. 04, Sturgill Napier. 5, that is Larry Miley. Starting on a tail in 86, Gary St. Amon, a driver change. Then also car number 6, Tim Ice, a driver change there. And car 81 goes to the tail as well. He had to go back to the pits after coming out onto the speedway. So Wetnall will start on the tail as well. By the way, the $500 bonus uh, from Riverside Auto Parts for the Riverside Quick Time Challenge. Up for crabs for Don, or make that Donnie Ritter if he should win. And John Vallow wastes little time. Quickly into the lead, car 21. Trouble in turn number two. 
Miami kid with his car in Vic. see Mike Simpson all right again the white flag
Napier with a uh, trip through the mud, 25, caution flu. In fifth spot is Mike Ward, sixth, that's Jim Cruz, seventh is Larry Harris, up to eighth spot in only 14 laps. Eighth spot is Gary St. Amant, all the way from 23rd. Fusco spins off the fourth turn.
for a way around Bobby Bonefoot. champions, a defending champion up against a uh, six-time champion. Welcome back to Columbus. Well, it's a nice welcoming back present to win the feature. I, uh, we're not quite, felt, felt like we're not quite dialed into the track yet. We got a little work to do, but the car sure did feel, did, did feel good in the feature. I'll tell you what, John, you had the field covered for most of it, but uh, the bird kind of caught up in the last five, didn't he? 
Yeah, I knew he'd be uh, tough and that he'd be there at the end, but I uh, just uh, did like the crew said, stay smooth, and uh, the car stayed pretty good. Well, this is the first of five in this Duke series with a $5,000 point fund, so this could be a pretty hefty payoff if you can pull this off a couple more times. Well, it'll be tough, but uh, we're going to try as hard as we can. Want to thank uh, some sponsors while you have a chance here? Yeah, our main sponsor, Burko Trucking, and uh, we got a brand new uh, sponsor that we want to dedicate this race to, our race uniforms. Uh, uh, the name of the company is Race Style in Cincinnati. They make fine sportswear. We've got Brooks Racing Tires, and we've got uh, Terry's Pizza, and, and can't forget uh, Coronet Racing Engines and Cobman Transmission. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that one. All we can say is he's back. Hey, he is tough. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause? Make some noise. It's a 25 lap event. Next up, we've got uh, car 83, Bobby Stacy, and 30, Rusty Mortimer. In car 71, that's Scott Hoffman, and 70, Heavy Hill. 43 is Mike Schweier, 47, Randy Tharp, 27, Dave Dysinger, and 24, Rob Martin. Then comes, uh, let's see, 22, Bubba Parsons. And 52, Tom Bond. 65, George Lindsay. Car number 9, that is Don Holland. Car uh, 77 is uh, uh, Don Townsend, Jr. Eighteen, Bo Davis. Uh, let's see, who else we got out there? Ron Mangus in double zero. 46, Carl Katz, 26. Scott Stevens, 31. That is Jim Hersey, 49, Bobby Atkins, 93, Jamie Hunt, car number six, Bill Wellman, and car 97, Mark Life. So that is your field for this, the 25-lap street stock feature. Keep in mind, no yellow flags, but if the car is uh, stalled on the track, we do throw a red. drivers involved.
takes over second spot. Now Heavy Hill relegated to third. Rob Martin on the move in car 24. Mike Schweier, fourth spot now. Don Townsend Jr. is fifth. Townsend working around Mike Schweier. He'll go after Heavy Hill next. Also, we've got a battle at the front. Stacy trying to fend off Rob Martin. driver from last year off the pace car 43 meantime at the bottom of the racetrack we've got scott hoffman he is off the racetrack now hoffman is at 71 backing up eight laps are down townsend continues to make his way toward the front now bo davis down in turn number one he's back underway we're still under green Number four, Mortimer. Red flag. Red flag is Rusty Mortimer. Unable to get that car back moving. started in 11 spots and uh, quickly moved up into contention. Don Townsend Jr. began this race in 16th position. The guy that's really made some moves and started 19th, that's Ron Magus. He now runs in the fifth spot. Magus in double zero. Quickly, Mark. quickly off the racetrack. What a job getting that car off the racetrack. Martin the leader. Second is Don Townsend Jr. Martin, of course, at the uh, January Awards Bank was the recipient of the Bob Evans Rookie of the Year for Columbus Motor Speedway last year. Martin slips inside of Townsend. Now Hunt slips inside of Townsend as well. A half a lap to go. Hold on to your seat, Betty. This is going to be close. Jamie Hunt with a hello. How do you do? Townsend spins, Ron Martin wins. Second goes to Jamie Hunt. Third is Ron Mangus. Fourth is, I don't know. What a wild finish. down here with the uh, happy young man and uh, did you uh, think after Mr. Townsend passed you you were going to get back in the lead? Nope. I had a second place finish under my belt first of the year. I was happy. And you were happy with that?